I am at the track, so I've been doing this for like a week now. I just haven't been sharing everything. Uh, but man, it feels good to be at the track. I met a couple of cool people. Actually, I met uh, a young kid and his dad or trainer this morning. who qualified in regionals for this region and is going to the finals. So he's like a 10 year old kid running like a 529 in the mile. That is amazing. That's like probably a little better than what I did back during my cross country and track days. If you guys don't know much about it, the average for someone running a mile is about seven and a half to eight minutes. And this 10 year old kid's running, you know, five minutes and 29 seconds. And they're trying to push for 520, which I would put him like in the top 30 to 50 kids in the nation. So yes, I'm running stairs. I did like two and a half miles right now running. I did lunges yesterday and stuff, so I'm pretty sore, so I'm not doing nothing too intense. Um, it's getting warm, it's like 8.30. It's already probably like 90 degrees. So I need to wrap this up and go home. I'm actually leaving a little later than I'm used to. It's like nine o'clock and it's pretty hot, but I got a good workout in and I've been feeling good. I mean, it's crazy. So in this last week I've been working out, I've already lost like five pounds. I'm not doing only to get back in shape, but also for my health, of course. You know, my, my kids are my life and with the baby coming, that's my main motivation. And second, just to get back in shape. From, it's all about health, you know, it's all about my well-being and my family. So, and plus it feels good to be back in the track. A quick story, <coughs> on Monday, I was here again. And I, again, I've been running at the track because my shin splints are really bad. I need to get like kinesiology tape just to reinforce my shins. But uh, I didn't, I just ate a Nutri, like one of those fruit bars and a water bottle I almost like threw up while I was at the store in the Kroger by our house that I went to the whole restaurants were stripped they were modeling them so that was not a good experience so what I did what I used to do back in the day I used to <coughs> I just took two spoonfuls of peanut butter and a glass of water and that kick starts off my morning so I don't have to eat a lot or something heavy or something that's gonna make me feel funny after the workout. I mean, that was back in high school when I learned about the peanut butter thing. So if you guys know anything new, something that you guys do, just definitely let me know in the comment section. Kind of weird, they put these, uh, these like prison looking doors at schools. That's just kind of weird. We are at Discovery Green, y'all. So instead of actually paying a meter, I actually decided last minute to do it on the app, which is cool, but uh, you could just add time if we're gonna Oh, you could add time? So that's pretty cool, but we are, what, 20, 30 weeks pregnant. 30 weeks. So we can't be standing for too long. So I don't know if they have any Houston Astros here, but uh, they are somewhere down over there. So that's where we're going. For those of you not familiar with Houston, this that little part turns into like an ice skating rink. And I had never tried kayaking here. I mean, there's not a lot you can kayak, but it's something. From my experience, I think that when they're rear facing, you should use the anchors. So one's not safer than the other. Um, the main thing is a lot of parents want to put that infant carrier in the middle because that's the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Center point your vehicle for those way from side impact yeah. crashes. And a lot of vehicles, you have to use seatbelt. You can't, don't have those lower anchor options. Yeah. Um, but on the side position with this particular car seat, um, I think the anchors probably are a little more user friendly. Kind of leveled it off here, and I guess now I just put the seat on top. I think so. So the bubble is going to be for rear facing. While you're rear facing, you want um, baby your children to be at a 30 to 45 degree angle. Very important for those newborns. We don't worry about side head movement as much as that forward head movement closing off the airway. Yeah. So all rear facing seats will have some kind of angle indicator. Sometimes it's just a line. And you always want to check on a flat level surface, of course. If you're on a slanted driveway, you'll throw it off. Um, so that looks good and we always tell parents to check that before you actually install it so you don't have to uninstall it if it yeah. wasn't right but yeah so that bubble should be in between those two black lines so good on that as far as tightness goes no matter forward facing rear facing you always check out the seat belt path reasonable force it should not move more than an inch side to side front to back so you see there's a little bit more of some movement here I know with the seat you can definitely get no movement so how can I tighten it Hark? I feel like I pull this pretty tight yeah so, so like, um, this that? is nice and flat they didn't get twisted so that looks good honestly some of these seats you really just have to get in there if you notice sometimes you can just push with one hand this is a taller uh, vehicle so it's hard to do from down here yeah. but some times you can put your, push your legs in you can put your knee in just whatever works yeah. Just with one hand push, the other pull, so you don't think you get any more slack. And with this seat, we're actually going to roll up this extra slack. And then we'll do that test again. 
see that's not moving. Make, made, made a big difference there. There's always a better way, guys. So. <laughs> you always want it nice and tight. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Tight don't you don't can get not it. slack on your child's safety. <laughs> Never. The Two methods of installation, yeah. So there's the lower anchors, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and usually on the sides, as long as vehicles are newer than 2002, um, they will have them for sure. In the middle, sometimes you have to check your vehicle's owner's manual as well as your child um, car seat manual yeah. to make sure you can use lower anchors. You may have to use seatbelt in the middle, um, but one's not safer than the other as long as you only use one or the other. The only thing to be mindful of is as you get into that forward-facing stage, yeah. these lower anchors do have a weight limit. Um, you never have to worry about it with a rear-facing only seat. They'll have a label on the actual car seat itself, um, like this yeah. convertible wheel, that tells you that lower anchor weight limit. And at that point, you would have to switch the seatbelt. And so say we had to put it in the middle for whatever reason and then didn't have a lower anchor option, I'll show y'all seatbelt or just if some parents are more comfortable with seatbelt. Yeah. So we're gonna loosen that up. Also in some these. cars, I've noticed, especially when you switch to like forward facing, like the anchor straps and some car seats don't reach all the way around. So um, I don't know. So they should. That's a manufacturing sometimes, thing. Sometimes. So they should. Sometimes you have to change the belt path. And so sometimes they're in this rear facing belt path and you have to actually like weave them throughout the car seat to put them in that next uh, belt path. And yeah. so sometimes that's a little tricky. They get caught on like yeah. the harness strap, but they should reach. So these are all spaced perfectly. And so they should reach. In the middle, they may not, if they're not um, appropriate, yeah. but yeah, some car seats are just a little trickier than others. So we're gonna store the lower anchors when we're not using them, tighten them up out of our belt path. Tuck it in, roll it, tuck it in. Roll it. Just trying to get as much stuff out of the way. Yeah. And, and we already double checked the angle, but just for good measure, kind of put pressure here like it's nice and tight. Yeah. The angle looks like it's gonna be good. For this particular seat, it has a lock off. So I'll get to that. Feed it through first. Feed it through, buckle it in. Make sure the webbing is nice and flat, didn't get twisted or folded. Yep. Um, some seat belts, if they, or car seats, if they don't have this lock off, you would then lock through a tractor. What's but this car seat has a lock off. So right here on the side, be on both sides. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be the locking mechanism of your car seat for the seat belt. Um, so we'll see once you get it tight. Some will have like a little thing here that opens up. If they, it'll always be well labeled if there's a lock off, and if it's Actually, labeled lock off, that's how you should lock. Is it still recommend to like pull it all the way to lock it and then like tighten it. Not if it has a lock off. Okay. You always want to check your car seat manual because very few may say it's okay, um, and they'll always tell you. There's also a, like a tensioner plate that's not a lock off, so in that case, you would also lock the seat belt. So that's why it's always important to either find a car seat technician or to look at your manual to see. But in this case, this is a shoulder belt lock off, so they do not want us to lock the retractor. Mm. So we're gonna tighten it um, the same way. Um, as you would if you left the retractor. So pull on this top portion of the shoulder belt only. Kind of put pressure into that seat. Get all the slack you can. If I let go, I'm gonna lose the slack. So I wanna keep that yeah. slack. Once I don't think I can get any more, keeping that tension, I'm gonna slide it into the shoulder belt lock off here. Nice and flat. Don't want to get folded or twisted when it gets fed through there. Yeah. So now same test, reasonable force, it shouldn't move more than an inch side to side front to back. So you'll see both ways, just a totally belt. safe, totally side, or totally tight, and then That's angle so, looks good, yeah. so we're good to go. Awesome. So we just pop the carrier in. We never want it indenting or putting pressure to the vehicle seat back, and so that looks good here, but something to be mindful of, sometimes we run into that issue and yeah. smaller vehicles may have to move it over to the next seat. This carrying handle, Pico lets you put in any lock position. However, not all car seats are like that, so always double check your manual for that as well. All kinds of stuff as far as the carrier. We get into the harnessing, rear facing at or below, forward facing at or above, that chest clip armpit level, pinch chest at the shoulders for tightness. These infant inserts will all have certain height or certain weight requirements when they want you to take them out. And so always important to yeah, read that manual or find a car seat technician near you so you can get all the information, get fitted into that seat properly because there's a lot more to it even than that. So we go into yeah. projectiles in and around the car seat. Hot car, of course, that we're doing the demo today. Yeah, with all the info you shared today and the demonstration, we definitely hope that it gives some insight to parents to definitely go just look at your manuals, y'all. Like, come on, yeah. look at your manuals and just do it right and do it better. It's always a better way to do it. Yeah. And if you have any doubt, um, in the greater Houston area, it's a free service, come find a technician. We'll do it for you, we'll teach you, make sure you leave with no doubt in your mind that you know how to install it correctly, your kid's safe. I feel a lot better now that I can definitely do it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they're always constantly updating and changing yes. technology, and so always good to keep up to date. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, no problem. <laughs> uh, yeah.
And it is 103 degrees already, but it was exciting. It's just so hot. It also happened to be watering day for the plants. It's so hot, it feels like... My skin feels like it's like crispy. Yeah, and we weren't even out there that long. So we're excited to be out of the sun. You want to help me water the plants? Yeah! All right, let's do it. And more exciting news. <laughs> Tomorrow, we go for our second ultrasound to check on the baby and see if my placenta has moved. If my placenta moved, then I'm not going to be put on bed rest. If it didn't move, then I am going to be put on bed rest, and that's going to suck. And it's also going to put a damper on like all of our plants. <laughs> So, I'm also scheduled to go to New York for Baby Johnson's next Wednesday. No, Tuesday. I'm going Tuesday night, coming back Wednesday night. So, I'm just going overnight. I'm going Wednesday, Tuesday afternoon, coming back. Isn't that like same day? Like that one time I went to LA in the early yeah. morning, and then I flew right back out that afternoon. Yeah. I felt so off that next two days. I was like two hours back and I'm flying to, it was like, it was literally like time travel. It was so weird. <laughs> it felt awkward. But it was, it was interesting. Mila was gonna, supposed to take a nap, but Jeff woke her up because she was asleep in the car and he woke her up. She would have been asleep right now, but because he woke her up, she's not. So she's not going to take a nap. I'm going to post for Baby Johnson's and then we're going to go to JCPenney. Well, you write a blog post while you do that. What kind of dinosaur Don't is that? Mila, what kind of dinosaur is that? T-Rex. A T-Rex. T-Rex? You saw that little shirt that we got? Oh yeah, Mila thought it was for her. Houston Astros World Championship, baby. Bam! Yeah. Woo! We got two. It yeah. doesn't fit you, Mila. I'm sorry. I got a tattoo. Baby sister. What a with me. <laughs> Two. Two so we are um it's like a very random just get together night so we are here i brought my laptop and stuff because that means we're not gonna get home like we're just not getting home early or on time so that means that i'm gonna have to start editing the vlog here if i want to be able to wake up early tomorrow so i can go running again so that's what we're doing.